hello, we've seen my CPU parts and some points about its wiring in the previous video. In this video, we're going to know how a simple program execute by CPU and then some points of its memory will be told. Probably, this is the simplest wiring of my CPU with a single input and output, and also this is a simple PLC program. How does PLC execute this program? Suppose here is a virtual power line. So, the power can reach to this contact. The address of this contact refers to PLC input. So when this switch is pressed, this 24 volt appear at PLC input. Then in the program, CPU make this contact to be close. Now the power can reach to this output. Similarly, this address refers to my first output. So PLC activates its first output, and thus make the H1 lamp be on. Now let's see a flowchart, which show an overview of how the user program execute. There is operating system and a user program. After the power supply has been switched on, the control processor checks the consistency of the hardware and parameterizes the modules. Then the startup program is executed once if present. User programs are usually divided into individual sections called block which are OB, FC, FB. OB or organization blocks, represent the interface between operating system and user program. The operating system calls an OB for specific events. For example OB100 execute one time when the operating mode of the PLC changes from stop to run. In each OB block, if the user program be long and complex, it can be written in some FC and FB. After startup mode, in the run mode, operating system first update PLC outputs and then its inputs. After that, execute the main program cycling until the PLC is turned stop. In each cycle, the operating system update the output and inputs and call OB1 as the main block. Every time an interrupts occur, the operating system calls appropriate OB and then came back to main programs. The red line is known as cycling in program execution. So the CPU has three modes, stop, start up and run. Let's see what CPU does in each mode. In the stop mode, the CPU does not execute the user program. CPU handles any communication requests, as appropriate, and performs self-diagnostics. In this mode, the run-stop LED will be off. As you see, in the startup mode, CPU does A to E tasks which are A. Clears the process image inputs. Process image inputs is a memory where PLC stores its input states. B. Initializes the process image outputs. Like previous, process image outputs is a memory where PLC output states are stored. C. Processes the startup organization blocks such as OB100. D. Copies the physical inputs to the process image inputs. E. Interrupts are queued to be processed in the run mode. And the last item. F. Enables the physical outputs to be changed. In this mode, the run stop LED is flashing, alternating green and yellow, indicates that the CPU is in startup mode. Ok, now let's see run mode, in this mode CPU. First updates the physical outputs. Then reads the physical inputs and update its inputs image memory. After that, run the user program. This start with OB1 as the main programming block. Then CPU performs some self-test diagnostics. And every time an interrupts occur, the operating system calls appropriate OB and then came back to main programs, and also responds to communication requests. In this mode, the run stop LED will be green. CPU executes all these tasks cycling until the PLC is turned stop. Also error and main LEDs can help us to know state of PLC. For example, flashing red in error LED, indicates an error, such as an internal error in the CPU, error with the memory card, 
or a configuration error. OK. We've seen how a program is executed by a PLC. In other side, a industrial program need to know electrical equipment states and signals value. So, how a PLC store these information in its memories? As you know, in a memory, bit is the smallest unit to storage two states zero, false, or one, true. A digital input of PLC only have two states. So it needs one bit. Zero when input is inactive and one when input is active. If we have eight bits, it's called a byte. One byte can store 256 states. See this table. We can store zero with eight zeros. One with seven zeros plus one, and similarly two, three, to two hundred and fifty-five. There are a lot of standard to save data such as numbers, time, date which will be told later. For example, let me use seventh bit to store sign. Zero for positive and one for negative numbers. So based on this table, I can store negative numbers too. These numbers can be a electrical signal value, or some industrial parameters such as motor speed or water level. If we need more precision, we can have 65,536 states with 2 byte, which are called a word. Now let's see how we refer to a location on memory. A CPU has three important memories which are used frequently. Inputs image memory, main memory, and output image memory. Let's start with the main memory. We use M letter for this memory. This table show memory structure. First column show byte number which in every row we have 8 bits, bit 0 to bit 7. For example see this location of memory with M0.6 address. M refer to main memory. Next number determine byte number and after dot, second number determine bit number. Similarly M1.4 and M5.2. If we want to refer whole of a byte, we need just write byte number such as M2 or M5. If we need a word, W is inserted between M and byte number. Such as MW0 which consist of byte 0 and 1. Or MW3 which refer to byte 3 and 4. Here pay attention to MW4 and MW3 addresses. Byte 4 is used in both of them. So if MW3 is used to store number, we shouldn't use MW4 to store another number. These rules are hold for input and output image memory. Just we need use, I, or Q, instead of M. In this video some important points related PLC and its programming have been told. Many PLC of Siemens company, like mine can be programmed by TIA portal software. In next lesson, we're going to have an overview of this software by doing a simple project. See you in the next lesson.